okay so you should have something that comes up to show this is recording um so the recording has started now so i'd like to say welcome to jason cole so i'm going to tell you a little bit about jason cole um he has got certificate and diploma in um, company direction from the institute of directors so he's an uber director of all things directors he did a hnc at worcester college of technology um he was a senior engineer at jaguar he was a senior consultant at mtech and he's now the Client Relationship Director at Jonathan Lee Recruitment. And you've been there almost 12 years, Jason, I think. I had a quick look at your LinkedIn, so it's almost 12 years. Do you get a clock or something after 12 years? You should get something, shouldn't you? I'm hoping so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. um, but two important things. He's been a mentor with us probably for the last five years. I was trying to work out the last five years or so with the Institute of Directors Student Mentoring Scheme, which is fantastic. But most importantly, he's a lovely, smiley, wonderfully supportive, helpful guy. That's the main thing you need to know about Jason, which is why he's offered to give up his free time to come and share some kind of hints and tips about coping in this virtual, different, new normal world that we kind of find ourselves in. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Jason. I'm going to seamlessly put his slides up. So you may be able to see him and the slides or just the slides. But at the end, we'll close the slides down and then you'll be able to see Jason so you can ask him the questions you want to ask him. OK, so thank I'm going you. To share the slides now. Great. OK, um, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thanks to Jenny and John for inviting me to um, to take part in this. And thanks to uh, everyone for, uh, for for joining in on this webinar. Um, and, um, you know, some of the things I'm going to go through really um, might appear to be sort of uh, obvious to you, but uh, hopefully in mentioning them to you, it, it'll bring them forward to your consciousness and you'll take them forward into, you know, the interview settings that you'll find yourself in uh, very soon, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, so as I say, sort of welcome, really. Um, Jenny's just put up the um, sort of agenda, really, which is quite loose and fluid. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk you through a little bit about some of the things that you've looked at, um, at, at, at getting correct, um, you know, with the work that you've done with the IOD mentoring programme. Um, as, as Jenny said, I've been part of the mentoring programme for a few years now, and it's been a real privilege to work with you guys and, and your predecessors in previous years. And, and I hope that, um, that you're taking um you know a lot of value from it really so um uh so yeah so we we've done the welcome uh plan for the session uh, i'm going to take you into the virtual hints and tips uh portion of the presentation now and then we'll have the q a after so um coronavirus update styly as, as the bbc do can we have the next slide please jenny um Thank you. So, um, so your mentors uh, um, have taken you um, through the CV preparation um, a portion of the service that, that we've been offering to you, uh, and your CV is now ready. So, I think we can take that as given that your that your CV is um, uh, is is appropriately um, you know ready to take to the market. Um, and uh, we've done a little bit of work, I, I know, um, with the mentors and with the university services themselves on your LinkedIn um, uh, profiles and, and how that needs to be ma match fit. And I'm sure that that's the case now. Um, what I would say about LinkedIn is um, it is the professional Facebook, um, but don't treat it like it's Facebook because, you know, it is a professional tool, as I'm sure you all realise. Um, and and it's important that you present yourself well um, in a business context, really. Um, so, you know, it's there for you to um, elevate your profile and to um, give you the opportunity to post business associated items um, in a, you know, in a responsible manner. And that's not to say that you shouldn't give a little of your personality to, um, but just remember the purpose of it, really, because we are finding that employers well and, and recruitment businesses really uh, are looking at linkedin profiles to accompany the cv uh, and the applications that um any candidate might 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 be making whether there is you know a first time candidate as a, you know a, um, a graduate or or somebody that's a little further on in their career um so yeah uh, use a business appropriate photo 
um, you know, maybe a, um, a collar and tie, perhaps, or you know, uh, sm smart business um, uh, apparel, um, and, um, and and make sure you populate your profile with information that's appropriate to business and your aspirations as well. Um, and don't forget also that jobs are advertised on LinkedIn as well. Um, in fact, uh, our own business uses link a, a very um, uh, enhanced version of LinkedIn to search for candidates. Uh, as well, so uh, that's important to remember. One of the other things as well, I think people sometimes forget is <clears throat> maybe using their own network to market themselves. You know, if you've um, if you've worked part time somewhere, you know, use the people that you've interacted with um, to um, you know to, to spread your network further, as well as obviously the things that you've been doing um, to join the the IOD um, mentoring program too. So. Lots of different ways that you can, um, you know, elevate your profile. Um, so next slide, please, Jenny, if that's OK. So I ju just wanted to kind of give you a bit of inside recruiter knowledge, I suppose, with regards to um, some of the places that you can take your CV to um, to help market yourself. And, and as I say, as I said at the very beginning, um, you know, some of these things might be known to you already, so I'll apologise for that. But um, uh, you know, utilise things like Indeed and Total Jobs, um, CV Library, and Job Site, and Read uh, are probably the more established um, job boards. But Indeed is definitely the largest now, um, so make sure your CV is on there when you're ready to start looking for a role. Um, and um, make sure the peripheral information is completed complete um, uh, satisfactorily um, and um, you know you, you, you're making sure that you're covering all bases um, and I would add that both recruitment companies and um, end users hiring uh, companies also use these these places as well as as um, as LinkedIn to find candidates okay um, next slide please Jenny okay so, um, so just moving on a little bit now into um, into preparing for an interview itself. Um, so, an interview can take sort of many forms. Really, they can be informal, they can be formal. It might take the form of a panel interview. You might have initial one to one. You might take an interview that um, that, that, that is part of a three stage process. You might be required to um, put together a presentation based on a particular remit. There are lots of different um, uh, things that you'll you'll experience, I'm sure. Um, and oftentimes, um, interviews are a, a bit of a synthetic um, situation because a, a lot of people um, aren't that great at interviewing. Um, so it's important that you give a little of yourself to the interview process. Um, to sort of meet the interviewer halfway. D don't forget that um, an interviewer will be looking to to match someone against a model candidate that they'll have against a particular job spec. So, so it's important that you assist the interviewer, if you like, in making the process fluid. Um, the, the the recruiter the the interview is benchmarking you against a set of characteristics that they have in their own mind not just against the job spec that you've that, that you'll have seen before you get to the interview um but in their mind's eye they'll be looking to transplant the individual into an existing team so it's how well you can fit into that team as well really um Make sure that you prepare yourself really well for the interview and you prepare yourself in a number of ways, really. Initially, I would say familiarise yourself with um, the background of the business that you're going to meet. So look at the company's mission statements, look at the values. You know, these things, a lot of these things will be on their, their website, you know. Um, it's low hanging fruit, so make sure that you know it well. Um, look a little into the market in which um, it, it operates. So, you know, are they the market leader in, tele in telecommunications, for instance? Who are the biggest competitors? 
Um, what are its products and services? You know, are they a consultancy? Do they manufacture? Do they factor items? Um, what has their business growth been like um, recently? You can you can see company information on Company's House quite easily, um, so you can look at um, you know the stability of the business. Um, you can understand about the um, you know the, the current directors of the business if there's been transition previously, um, and you're trying to find out about growth potential for the future. Um, it might be that the, co the company operates in, in different countries as well. Um, and there might be other companies within that within the group. Um, all of these things are really important so that you can um, you, you can take your learning to the conversation, really. Um, remember that the, the interview is a two way conversation, so it's important to listen but lubricate the conversation as well um be encouraging of the conversation um and if you are required to present get some real clarity on the subject matter be probing when you receive either the email or the phone call asking you how asking you to prepare uh, for the meeting um so that you can add some real value it's not just about having a pedestal um where you can um articulate your ability to present Add some value so that so that they can um, so that your audience can see how well you'd um, fit in and add value to, to to the team that you you're proposing to join. Um, so prepare some questions. Apologies if I'm hopping around a little bit from what I put on the slide, but uh, um, you you'll need to prepare some questions. Some of them you may not ask. But at least if you've got a suite of preparation behind you, A, it will give you confidence and B, it will give you something to, um, you know, plug some um, some dead air that can sometimes happen in an interview situation. Um, so and I would suggest things like, um, you know, can you expand in some more detail the description of the position? Most job specifications, believe it or not, in our experience uh, tend to be um, lifted off of a shelf. So they, they may not be as accurate as, uh, for instance, the line manager um, um, chairing the interview may have had all the fr fr work done by HR and HR may take something from a file rather than, um, you know, the actual quirks of the job that have emerged as the as the role has evolved, really. So uh, it's important, really, that you, you ask about the description of the position and determine if it's if it's different from what you've been um, gifted so far. Um, you might want to know why the positions become available. Um, has the company expanded? Um, has somebody been promoted out of the position? Um, a, a multitude of reasons, really. Um, Ask them about the culture of the business as well. Um, we see so many different um, business cultures. Um, our client base is, um, is, is a mixture of um, original equipment manufacturers, so car companies like Jaguar Land Rover or Toyota. Um, we work with uh, tier one manufacturers of car components, um, consultancies, and and even in within those um, groups of company descriptions I've mentioned, you still get different company cultures um, because those businesses are run by different people um, and you tend to get uh, DNA in the workforce that's come from the creators of the businesses very often. Um, so so that's that's important really. I think for your own <clears throat> for your own information um, and to give um, the interviewer an opportunity to talk about, you know, the, the pulse of the business, really. And, and people like talking about this sort of thing, you know, have a have a varied conversation in the interview. Um, you might want to talk about, um, you know, what plans the company has for future development. Um, you know, what kinds of people have been previously successful in the company? Um, what potential there is for development for someone who demonstrates um, the right ability and achievements in the role that you're um, competing for. Um, and also, you know, what, what's the next step really in the process? Um, so so there's, there's a bit about your preparation. Um, 
let, let's also not, not forget about the um, you know the physical preparation that you need to do as well. So it's really really important that whether your interview is going to be face to face or whether it's an online interview. And we've seen a lot more online interviews actually at the moment, um, given you know what's happening with our society. Um, so regardless, um, you know, make sure you look the part. Um, Treat it in exactly the same way as if you're meeting somebody face to face. And I'm sure, you know, very soon we'll be in a, a situation where there are more face to face interviews occurring. Um, be absolutely sure as well, you know, the exact time and the exact place of the interview. Um, believe it or not, that still sometimes happens. Um, so, uh, yeah, be, be assured that you've checked and double checked um, uh, about the, uh, the arrangements for the interview. Um, make sure that you know your CV really, really well. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm just going to click away from. I've got rid, get rid now. Let's see, I've got rid of my toolbar now. Know your CV really well because that will form the basis of the interviewer's questions to you. That that's essentially all they've got to go on. So if your CV is being interrogated but you don't know it very well, it might appear that. Um, that some of those things have been um, perhaps uh, supplemented rather than being the, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the true characteristics of the candidate. So just know it well. Um, review uh, specific examples in your background and be ready to talk about them. So and that, that may not necessarily be just about sort of work experience that you've had. Um, there'll be, you know, lots of a, a, any item on that CV could be interrogated, so just just be ready to be um, questioned about them, really. Um, so coming on to the next slide, thank you, Jenny. Um, as I said earlier, the interview um, process can often be a bit of a synthetic um, and testy um, situation. So you know, try and relax. Um, it's all about correct conduct, really, um, and appropriate conduct. Uh, you don't want to be unfamiliar, but you do want to be friendly and you do want to be warm. Um, as I say, it's not just about the skills that you bring potentially to the role. Um, it's about character fit. Uh, you know, there'll be an existing team. Um, you know, most people don't want uh, a team disrupted um, by bringing a new, a, a new person to it. You know, they want uh, a harmonious and an appropriate fit, really. So demonstrate your capability to be social, demonstrate your capability to uh, maybe mirror a bit some of the, the characteristics of the, um, the interviewer's personality. As I say, you might be being interviewed by somebody from HR or you might be being interviewed from uh, by, sorry, the, uh, the, the line manager who's, you know, ultimately you'll be working with. But in turn, you know, you need to qualify that that in that any questioning as well. Um, so you've been interviewed for how well you can do the job. Um, give a little of yourself. Um, let them give a give give a window on on your personality. Essentially, um, those interpersonal skills are, are, are really key. Um, as you'll see um, uh, from my own conduct, sometimes there's a. Uh, a tendency to ramble. Um, so it's important to remind yourself to listen to. Um, very easy to go off on a thread of explanation about, um, you know, maybe a, a point in your career or one of your achievements. Important to give the detailed explanation um, so that you can give the interviewer something to connect to. Um, but just be just be aware of how much time you're spending on, on each question, uh, on each answer, sorry. It needs to be long enough, but not too long. So, so just, be, just be mindful and rehearse these things before you go into, uh, into the situation. <clears throat> we never advise that you inquire about salary during the first interview. That's something that can be done, um, you know, either prior to a second interview um, or certainly away from the first conversation. Um, it can contrive things a bit, we, we find. Um, also, it might be that you might you, you have, have someone acting on your behalf to negotiate um, the things that you've already been clear about, um, whether that's through an agent 
or whether that's through the person that you're interfacing with um, between you and, and the line manager. The line manager may not understand the characteristics of the package as completely as you need them to be. So um, we, would tend, we would tend to advise you as, as consultants um, to leave that to either the, the interim between the two stages um, or the second stage. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so yeah, we'd advise to be as charismatic as possible, be a good listener, um, pause effectively um, after the, the, the interviewer asks the question, um, and don't just answer the question, respond, truly respond, truly respond. Um, so expect um, questions that relate specifically to the role, so know the job specification very well. Um, I would expect things like, um, questions like, why do you want to come to work for ABC Engineering? Um, how do you feel you can help or add value to our company? Um, wh what do you expect in this position that you were not getting in previous positions? Um, uh, because they may be reflecting on some part-time work that you've done whilst you've been, um, you know, a graduate. Um, they may ask you if you've got other positions in train um, and just be uh, up, up front and open about about that as well um, because it may be that you're you know um, you're considering other positions and interviews may clash um, uh, when, when they're being organized for you. Um, you you might be asked how do you think you'd fit in with our firm um, and how much do you know about your company well as I said earlier on if you've done your preparation correctly you may already have satisfied that um, but it's okay to reflect on the things that you've already discussed. Um, definitely, definitely expect questions about your current situation and that may be um, your current employment. We've discussed with a few of you some of the um, great things that you're doing, um, you know, to uh, to bring revenue in um, uh, at this present time, um, but also about your course. Um, you know, I would expect most interviewers to be really interested in, um, you know, in the curriculum that you've covered. Um, and, you know, they may ask about your dissertation, they may ask how your exams have gone, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, have a comprehensive um, consciousness about, about your activities to date. Um, they're likely to ask a lot of questions about yourself as well. Um, the interviewer will be looking to form a a solid picture of you, a per, you know, um, an idea of your personality, you know, um, you know, things that um, th that give them a, a, an understanding of, uh, as I said to, said earlier, about how you fit into the rest of the team. Um, you know, a, 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 one, a quite a common one that we, we hear asked quite frequently is, um, what does success mean to you? You know, how do you judge it? What are things that motivate you? Um, what's your greatest strength? What's your greatest weakness? Uh, and those, particularly those two, are really difficult to answer. I get this, you know, but it, uh, think about it. Think about it beforehand, um, and substantiate it. You know, um, it's not it's not an opportunity to fish for compliments. It's it's a, an opportunity to critique yourself really and identify things where you you feel you want to improve. Um, Either by training or by spending some more time on um, on, on evaluating that that part of your personality. Um, you might be asked about your um, you know what you're looking for in a position again. Um, what that means to you know your aspirations. Um, you know your your ideas around career progression. Um, you know you might be asked if you creative are you analytical describe your personality all these kind of things and and it, it it's fairly common as well to to be asked to do psychometric tests as well prior to the interview so it could be that you, you you've been taken through those um results as well which is always quite an interesting process i always think um so uh, as i say uh, being asked about your, uh, your your achievements um, those tend to be sort of uh, outside of your, your, your career and your um, uh, your education. So it might be something that you've done um, through voluntary work. You know, there's been lots of voluntary work opportunities um, in this current climate. 
Um, you might have done, I don't know, Duke of Edinburgh or something like that. But, um, you know, w demonstrate that you're reflecting on these things positively and that you're proud of um, having achieved these things. Um, but um, but it, that it supplements your academic uh, pursuits and your professional pursuits as well. Um, and, and they're inevitably going to ask uh, questions about where you see your future. Sorry, I've just had something pop up on the screen. Um, and assuming that you've done a fantastic job, as I'm sure you will, in your first interview stage, congratulations, you've made it to the second interview stage. OK, so when you, you may you may or may not meet um, someone um, from the first interview um, when you when you enter into the second interview stage. Um, and you might feel a little more settled. Hopefully you'll feel a, a little more settled, but don't be tempted to be over familiar again. Um, it, it is always a, a temptation, but, you, you know, hopefully you've, you'll have grown in confidence a little bit. Um, and prior to that second interview, um, it's, it's pertinent to ask um, the person inviting you in um, who you will be meeting. So um, it may be that you're meeting sort of the MD, it may be that you're meeting um, a panel, it may be that you're being asked to present either for the first time or for the second time. Um, so, you know, expect a number of different sort of outcomes, really. Um, I, I guess you, you're likely to, to be asked things that sort of affirm um, the conclusions that the interviewer drew from the first interview as well. Um, you may be asked some of the same questions again. Um, you may be asked things like, why would joining us be a good move for you? Um, why should I take you on against uh, other candidates that I've seen? What can you bring to our company? Um, those sorts of things, really. So, um, but I, I think, um, you know, I, th I think it's appropriate to kind of take, um, you know, more information with you, more probing information with you um, to that to that second meeting. Um, you, you're likely to be asked more about um, um, about your opinion on the business as well, because they'll expect you to have done more research um, from the findings that you've um, um, divulged from the first meeting um, and what it can bring to the company. Um, I'd, Im I'd imagine the second interview is likely to be maybe a bit shorter than the first as well, unless you're presenting. Um, but um, but yeah, what I'd encourage you to do is to not leave that second interview without asking what happens next. You're kind of in a more solid uh, position by that point. You know, by the, the indications are that in being invited back for a second meeting means that they're really interested in you um, and it's pertinent to, you know, ask for a little bit back. So who you'll be meeting next, the position and title uh, prior to the interview. Um, so that you can m maybe craft more pointed questions um, about the uh, the role and responsibilities, perhaps within within the role. Okay, uh, so closing the interview. So um, oftentimes we have candidates come back to us that have completed either a first or a second stage interview, and they've come out and they say, "Oh, I've I've ruined it. You know, I've 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 missed the opportunity. You know, it went it went really badly." I think people go into a second interview stage, particularly if you're not an experienced interviewee, um, with expectations perhaps that are unreasonable to yourself. So, you know, don't shut the door on yourself, really, is what I'd say. Don't be too hard on yourself because um, it could be a test of character, you know, um, how you deal with disappointment and how you deal with a variety of emotions in a business setting um, is, a fair, is a fair test, really. Um, so don't appear discouraged. Um, stay composed, stay buoyant. Um, you know, meet any challenges that you get in a conversation positively and buoyantly. Um, and if you're interested in the position, you need to tell the interviewer. You know, you, you need to... You, let's not talk in tongues all the time. You know, you need to be honest and straightforward um, and show a bit of passion for the role, show a bit of passion for the company. Um, listen, this is our second meeting. Um, I've done lots of research on the company. I, I really think I really see my future here. Um, you know, be bright, show a bit of your heart, um, and um, that'll you know leave them with a positive impression of you. Um, 
and after the interview you know once you've you've gone through all the pain and the torture um you know call back you know if you're going through a, a, an agency like like ourselves jonathan lee go back to your consultant that's uh, that, that's um, looking after you and and feedback to them you know talk through the process you know and 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 learn from the interview really through that process or or you know through a, with a family member you know think about how it went um you know how did it go what went well um what didn't go so well you know what was difficult um you know what did you learn from it what would i do differently next time you know um and 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 you can follow up with with these things by um as i say talking to your agent or talking to your maybe a hr contact that that um you know if you went directly to the interview was was handling all of your arrangements and things but talk about it discuss it and um you know bring those issues out onto the table and you know if you didn't make it this time you'll take the benefits of that learning to the to the next phase you know and you'll be an expert interviewee before you know it um and I think that's it, really. So, um, you know, thanks very much for listening. I really appreciate you spending time to uh, uh, to come on board. Um, and, and what I'd say is, you know, it's all about personalities. You know, um, we see a lot a lot of people, um, you know, be successful at interview that might have more tenuous links in terms of their skills um, and abilities. But, you know, when you have that opportunity to present yourself um, with with uh, other individuals, as I said at the very beginning, you know a lot of people aren't very good at interviewing. You know, so the easier you make it, the more impressed they'll be. Your social abilities. So be bright, be engaging, do listen, do interact, and take the conversation to the table. Your interviewer is engaging. How well you can do the job and how well you fit into the organisation. Okay. So I hope that's been um, of use to you. And um, if you've got any questions, please shout up. Okay, okay, thank you very much, Jason. So I think I've unshared the screen now. Can we see each other again? Yeah, yeah I can okay. see. Brilliant, thank you very much, Jason. Um, I'm just gonna have a quick look in the chat. There's no chat there yet. So we can just have a verbal chat. That's better anyway, isn't it? But just before we do, just in summary, I think of some of the things that Jason said there. I mean, thank you very much, Jason. That's fantastic. And in a real nutshell, some of the things that the students need to think about in terms of going for that job and finding that job. The few things I listed here was, in summary, was about updating your LinkedIn profile. So if you haven't done that, it's a good time to be doing that now to really know your CV because you're going to get grilled on your CV in the interview. So that was key to have a look at those job boards. And you were saying Indeed is the biggest one at the moment. So have a little look there. Preparation is key. Remember to ask them some questions maybe about the culture of the business or, you know, the, how they've survived COVID-19, et cetera, et cetera. So have a think of some topical questions. Uh, be friendly and warm, be passionate, um, do some research on the company and during and at the end of it or reflect, take, ask for some feedback and then feed that forward into the next one if there needs to be a second one or a different one with a different company. So I think those were the sort of key things. There's lots there, wasn't there? But I was trying to, what would be my top 10 mm, things? Yeah. I think those would be the top 10 things that I picked up. I'm sure you all picked up other things. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the recording and so then people won't feel too shy about asking questions or whatever. So just bear with me while I do that. Uh -huh. I think 